I pass a t-shirt store every day on my way into work, and every day for maybe the last 60 days, I've walked past a t-shirt in the window that says, I survived the slap, Will Smith, best actor, 2022. And every day I consider buying it. In fact, the only reason I haven't bought it yet is because there's a dress code at the restaurant I work at, and I'm always at work, which is fine. I like working at a restaurant fine, but I loved working at a restaurant when the slap happened. I remember the day when I survived the slap, Will Smith Best Actor 2022. I was walking past a table at the restaurant where I work, and at the table, the nerdiest looking man you've ever seen in your entire life was sitting across from his son, who looked nerdier. And as I walked past, I heard the nerdy dad say to his nerdier son, I mean, he insulted the man's wife. What would you do? And I think about that shit once every two days. I think about how he said it and how great it was that he said it. I think about what his son might have said afterwards. You know, I hope it was something tough. The slap was such a great time for fake tough guys. And to answer the man's original question, nothing. His son would have done nothing if a man had insulted his wife. Neither would the dad because he's a fake tough guy. In fact, he would have done nothing from every angle of the situation. If he was Will Smith, he wouldn't have defended his wife. If he was Chris Rock, he wouldn't have defended himself. And if he was anyone else in the world, he wouldn't have defended anyone else in the world because the world is the real world, and it isn't a movie. People don't defend each other because it is not cowboy times. Neither is it a movie about cowboy times where an actor like Will Smith would pretend to defend someone's honor, and then something good would happen. The world is the real world, and if you hit someone in the real world, something really bad will happen to you in prison. Unless, of course, you are a really rich actor like Will Smith, and then it'll be fine. You can pretend to protect your pretend marriage like the fake tough guy you are, and Will Smith is a fake tough guy. Now, I'd never say that to him for many reasons. Will Smith is 6'8", he played Muhammad Ali in a movie, and he seems unstable. But more than this, much more than any of this, I would never say these things to Will Smith because I'm a fake tough guy. Oh, yeah! I'll pretend to say it to him on the internet, but in the real world, you have to be fake tough. I didn't even talk back to the nerd from the restaurant I work at. I, I would have been fired immediately. Can you imagine? My boss hates me. He's told me that. He's told me, I'd love to fire you. He's told me he'd love to fire me for using the bathroom too much because I have to go to the bathroom. But he found out that you can't fire someone for using the bathroom too much because... People have to go to the bathroom. And he found that out from the corporate office after he'd fired too many people for using the bathroom too much, which he loved doing. And you know what I said to him after he told me that? Nothing. I would have been fired immediately, but I'll tell you what I did do. I got fake tough with him in my head. Like how I'm doing right now, talking back to that nerd from the restaurant that I never talked to. I'm screaming at him and my boss both. And the room that I'm sitting in is completely silent. But you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm screaming at the nerd and my boss? Congratulations. You live in the back of my mind. You live in the back of my mind now. And you plant little seeds back there. And once every two days, you come to the front of my mind. And you show me what you've grown. And I laugh in a silent room because I don't have friends to laugh with. Because I work all the time at a restaurant where my manager hates me. Wish he didn't. Maybe if he didn't hate me, we'd laugh together like fake tough guys and lie about what we'd do if we had survived the slap. But I'll never know. The slap, you know. Will Smith, one of the most famous men in America, slaps Chris Rock, one of the most famous men in America, in the 90s. Attacked him for no reason while I was doing his job. It's fine to get excited about that. The last time the most famous guy in America attacked the most famous guy in America for doing his job was the Lincoln assassination. And I like that shit. It's okay to get excited about that shit. Not assassinations, but you know, slaps. I've liked slaps ever since I was in grade school, back when I was a real tough guy. That's, that's the great thing about grade school. You can be a real tough guy because your real life hasn't started yet. You can't 
really hurt someone because you're little, but you can slap people all day and there's no real consequences. They just call your stepmom and she's not even your real mom. But then real life comes around the corner and smacks the tough right out of you. Sucks you dry with consequences. Sucks the real out of you all together and leaves you an old fake tough guy who never learned to make friends. Remembering slaps long past or settling for the ones on television. But what a slap it was. I mean, que bella. The drama of it, you know? I remember every moment. There was the procession. Will Smith gets out of his seat. He knows he wants to rebuke Chris Rock for insulting his wife, but he also knows he's a fake tough guy, and he has no idea what he's going to do. He approaches Chris Rock with no plan whatsoever. He knows he doesn't want to punch him, but he knows he doesn't want his wife to know that he's gay. It's a very tense situation, one which can only be resolved by a performative open palm slap. Then Will Smith sat back in his seat and started talking shit, and really started taking a shit on the most important night of his career, but boy, did I love that shit. Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. Before he even started saying those words, I started to feel my jaw kind of move along with him. I didn't even know what he was saying, but I sang along like it was my favorite song, and I felt my fingers moving, and when I looked at my phone, I composed just threads of venomous text messages to my boss. Never sent them, but they were frightening like the things Will Smith said. And they were born of pain, like the thing that Will Smith did. And I like that he did that. And I like that he got away with it, because I am God's fakest tough guy. And I like to think that if I were in Will Smith's position, I would be Will Smith. Isn't that the point of the Oscars? I would have done what he did. Isn't that the point of the movies, to pretend that you're the one on screen? I don't know. But I do know that I wish that I'd bought that slap t-shirt. But it's gone now. When I walked to the store on my way to work the other day, I walked past a t-shirt in the front window that said, I survived Johnny Depp's divorce 2022. And I didn't think about buying that shirt. Because I don't like to think about Johnny Depp's divorce. I don't like talking about it, you know? And this isn't a knock on you if you're enjoying talking about Johnny Depp's divorce. But I don't like that shit. On this particular issue, I've gone full vegan. I abstain from it. And through my abstention, yes, I have become superior to you, but that's just how it is. And no, before you ask, I don't think it makes me a hypocrite to celebrate the slap and to cast aspersions on the debt divorce. I think it makes me a nuanced hero and not a guy who wants to talk about divorce all the time. If I was a guy who wanted to talk about divorce all the time, I would have stayed married, but I didn't, because I don't, but other people do, and there's plenty to talk about, because for reasons utterly mysterious to me, the court is allowed to film Johnny Depp's divorce and broadcast it to the world. Why? If I was Johnny Depp, I would say, do not film my divorce and broadcast it to the world, but they're broadcasting his divorce to the world, and the world has responded with the most resoundingly unvirtuous discourse possible to the internet. I mean, this divorce has everything. Men who hate women, women who hate men, women who love Johnny Depp, and they're the scariest ones, but thank God they're there to talk about how much they like those Pirates movies, because without them, the only paracosm of suffering which the discourse surrounding Johnny Depp's divorce fails to address is Johnny Depp's divorce. That is what it's never about. It's never about Johnny. Anytime you hear someone talk about someone else's divorce, they're never talking about the divorce. You know, anytime you hear someone talking about anyone else's relationship, they're talking about themselves. If someone comes to Johnny Depp's defense, they're usually a man defending themselves. If someone comes to Amber Heard's defense, they're usually a woman defending the way that they feel about men. And when they talk to each other, the sound they create is a death rattle. Yet another death rattle from our never-ending end of the world, you know? The Johnny Depp divorce is a dumpster fire at the bottom of the internet, which every day boils up to the surface and lets its embers fly out all over the real world, you know? And I hate working at a restaurant during Johnny Depp's divorce. You know, I have never looked up 
any information about Johnny Depp or his divorce, and yet, through sheer osmosis, I know that he's getting his ass beat, I know that he's losing fingers left and right, and I know that his beautiful Aquaman wife maybe took a shit on him. Don't know why, and I don't know why people tell me. But the other day, at the restaurant I work at, I was serving a large family. I was serving a dad and his many daughters, and I was pouring them all coffee. And as I poured them coffee, the dad said to me, Hey, have you been watching the Johnny Depp divorce? And I said, No, I'm vegan. And he said, Watch this. And immediately, I was watching Johnny Depp's divorce on his iPhone. It was a five-second clip in which Amber Heard was weeping into a handkerchief, and I guess she sneezed or she sniffled something, and when it was over, the dad looked at me and he said, you can't tell me that bitch didn't just snort an eight ball. And his many daughters laughed. And I couldn't tell him, or you, or any of the many daughters, that Amber Heard wasn't doing an eight ball, because the truth is, if you did a lot of cocaine before your divorce, you're going to do a lot more cocaine during your divorce to get through it. And you'll probably do even more afterwards, because you'll probably have to take a job at a restaurant to cover costs, and it'll suck, because your boss will probably hate you, and because you'll have to shit all the time, because cocaine makes you have to shit all the time. But I'll tell you this, this is what I can tell you. That guy and his many daughters live in the back of my mind. And they're planting tons of seeds back there. Dirty little weed seeds which grow bigger every day and turn into trees. Crooked dandelion trees in the back of my mind that spray their seeds all over the front. Seeds the size of devil's heads. And that's not what I want. But luckily for Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, it doesn't matter whether anyone was doing an eight ball. She and her husband are rich actors and they won't face real consequences. But I still feel for both of them, because as long as they have real lawyers, they are going to have a real divorce. And here's the real scoop. Here's what no one will tell you. It'll be real boring. They will both constantly be the most bored they've ever been. They will constantly alternate between being the most bored and the most humiliated that they have ever been in their wonderful lives. They will undulate back and forth constantly in a war dance which their lawyers have long since perfected. That's their life's work. Their life's work is to ruin your life, to lull you into a maddening stupor, and then go for the kill as you look up and realize that the entire courtroom is talking about the most embarrassing things you ever did on cocaine. Bringing in your friends and enemies to testify against you, sometimes repeating the most unfortunate things you've ever said, sometimes telling lies in the outright, but it'll still be painful as hell. But the pain won't be what breaks you. That'll be the boredom. It's the mind-numbing monotony that'll have you sniffing eight balls and giving away half your shit just to move on with your life. But I don't know. I hope they work it out. Wouldn't that be nice? They seem kind of right for each other in that wrong sort of way. See how another year feels. I would love that for them if they just said, you know what, we're each going to have four fingers and eight toes by the end of this, but we're going to go to the grave holding each other's weird mismatched hands like a fucked up little puzzle that a kid made called love. Maybe not called love, but something a lot lovelier than divorce. I hate divorce, but here I am in a quiet room Talking about Johnny Depp's divorce.